Hello, everybody. I am Victoria. I am here for the animal spirituality um, video on stress and how it affects your pets. Um, I apologize. My my normal setup is a little bit discombobulated because I have a cat sitting behind me. Oh, I think she's moving. That means I can adjust everything. Yes, she's moving. Okay, hold on while you guys hop on. I'm going to sit back, bring the camera up close so we can get all comfy. So... Much better, much better. Um, so, hello, hello, hello. Today, this class, I'm gonna run a little bit different than I did have the last few classes because this is something that I, I'm very passionate about and I'm almost a little OCD about when it comes to my own pets. And it's also one of those things that we forget as pet guardian or animal guardians. And this affects their entire life. Every aspect of their lives are affected by the amount of stress that they have. So, uh, we have uh, it's about 148, so I'm going to wait until about, I don't know, 2.30, um, give time for uh, Facebook to catch on that there's a live going. Um, and as I'm waiting, I'm going to check the page to make sure we are live. Um, yes, we are live. So, um... Yeah, so this is really near and dear to my heart. Um, I know all of these are really important to me. I talk about it all the time. I mean, heck, I'm creating an entire um, curriculum around um, animal spirituality that I have not seen yet in um, or online or, or just in general. So give you a little bit about me it's like 243 so i'll start so let me just give you a little bit about me so you know where i come from um i don't think i've ever really explained to you guys exactly who i am and why i do the work that i do um i came to animal spirituality through my work as an enlightenment teacher teacher not teacher teacher and what I have, I've been an animal guardian my entire adult life. And I don't think there's been, I think maybe there's been two months my entire life that I've lived without an animal. So I'm very connected to them. And I do readings. I have done animal readings for cats, dogs, horses. I haven't done any uh, exotic breeds, really. Um, but I've done energy work on birds. Um, and uh, they love it, by the way. <laughs> they love it. But what in... Let me see. In, two, in 1999, actually, I got um no 2000 i had a cat bring all of her babies to my home because i guess where she had them outside wherever it was it wasn't safe so she brought them to me and um, i took them in and i already had five cats so i i brought her in um and uh, i shared uh, a, a vestibule uh, with another tenant who was a very dear friend of mine. So we kept the cats in this vestibule. It was plenty of room. Um, they had stairs to run up and down and um, my upstairs neighbor kept his door open when the kittens got old enough so they were able to go in and out of there. Um, so it was a really great thing. And that pretty much started my whole um, journey as an advocate for animals. I thought I was going to run a rescue 
and uh, I, they were all failed rescues because I kept them all. Um, and they stayed with me. And at a certain point in time, we had 12 cats. Um, I'm not a very good foster mom because they just stay. But through that experience, I started um, really learning about animal behavior, animal nutrition, um, animal psychology, just so I can manage my own brood that was growing at the time. Well, these cats pretty much stayed. Uh, two of the kittens went to my in-laws after um, my dear friend Sonny, who was taking care of them with me, uh, passed away in 2007. Um, I kept one of the kittens and the mother. My girlfriend took one of the other kittens. And, and then, of course, before I got them fixed, my Carly had two more kittens and they went to my friend's aunt. Through all of this, I, I was very focused on helping them live the most, the healthiest, highest quality life they can possibly live. And I lost track of the one kitten and uh, for a while there, I lost track of the two that went to my friend's aunt's house. But then um, I reconnected and I actually got one of them back when he was 12 and a half years old. Um, and that started really getting into um, what I do now. Um, he was my healer. He was my teacher. And um, I was able to use the skills that I was learning at the time on him to extend his life um, another two years because he already had kidney failure. He was at stage three and I was able to keep him at stage three for two years, which is unheard of. And my vet still has no idea how I did it. I know how I did it. Um, energy work and nutrition um, and keeping the stress levels down. <laughs> but, um, but, you know, as far as Western veterinary medicine, um, it was a surprise to them. Um, after um, Spike passed, I his mother also well his mother had cancer, so I was kind of doing a little bit of the nutrition part there. Um, but his brother, who I had actually been taking care of for his whole life, he ended up getting sick um, last year. And then I started really going into different therapies, energy therapy, crystal therapy, um, treating them as a soul being, listening to their needs, um, and doing what I needed to do to keep them stress-free and, and healthy. I actually was able to take, um, when he got sick, he got sick in March. And um, he was pretty much at death's door. He had multiple organ failure, uh, pancreatitis, inflamed liver. Um, his kidneys weren't working right. So it was like literally multiple organ failure. And I just did what I thought would be the best. I was already preparing that he was going to leave me. Um, so I started working on his stress levels, quality of life, keeping him healthy, making sure he ate well, enough water. We switched him to you know, filtered drinking water, um, a while ago. And, uh, that helped him immensely. But within two weeks of me focusing on his stress levels, um, internal stress levels and his nutrition and being his support a hundred percent, he got better. My vets were thought that when I brought him back two weeks later, that I was bringing him in to um, put him to sleep. Um, in fact, he had bounced back. He was 80% better. Again, my vets were amazed. And uh, and he lived all the way up until September. He died September 22nd. And his body just kind of was like, okay, I'm done. I'm 17. I had enough. Um, but in his transition, he... Um, and I will go into this because I think one of the classes down the road is going to be 
um, about um, the beauty of the transition of animals um, and helping them through that. But he was, he was a, an immense teacher with that. And I was able to um, really focus on his needs and his passing was quite beautiful. It was, it was really, it was quite beautiful. Even though he was in pain, it was quite beautiful. And, um, and that pretty much solidified it because right after that happened, that was when I was like, you know what? That's when my guide said to me, you need to take what you know about enlightenment and what you know about animals and bring them together. Since then, I have been focusing heavily on the stress levels of the cat that I have left. She has um, FIC, which is feline idiopathic cystitis. Idiopathic means they don't know what causes it. But in her case, every time she gets stressed, she ends up having a bout of cystitis. And, um, and so we've done a lot of things using uh, feel away pheromone treatments, um, I've done energy work on her. I have gotten, um, she hasn't had one in a really long time, but when she first came down with the FIC, I was able to do the energy work on her and her bouts would normally last about four to five hours, which is painful to watch, by the way, very painful to watch. Um, and once I started the energy work and focusing on her stress levels, I was able to knock that down to like, I think her very last one that she had um, was over and done with in less than an hour. Stress is really, 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 really important in animal care. And what I'm going to do tonight, now that you have the backstory of where I come to this, I'm not using notes. This is just off the cuff. This is all of the things that I've learned. And, um, and I've learned an awful lot how poor nutrition affects the body, how um, our energy affects the animal, um, environmental stresses, how they affect the animal. Um, and of course, how our treatment of them affects the animal. So hopefully this may be actually pretty short because I don't have anything prepared. So I'm not going to be reading from a book. I'm not going to be doing anything. I am just going to be speaking from my heart and allowing my guides to help um, formulate my message and my words tonight. The first thing I want to talk about when it comes to stress is we all know what stress does to us. Stress causes illness. Stress causes obesity. Stress causes um, what I call brain fog. Um, stress causes anxiety. Stress causes, oh my gosh. I mean, the list goes on. I can't even think because I'm trying to like figure out, you know, all the things that stress does to us. But basically, stress in humans is, I believe, one of the number one killers of our species. There's so many people that are live in this high energy and not good energy, this high energy world of rush, 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 nine to five, get it done. If you don't get it done, you're fired. Um, all of these things that we are bombarded with affects our health. When we eat poorly, it affects our health. When we don't take care of ourselves or drink enough water, it affects our health. It stresses our body and creates the adrenaline fight, flight, or freeze um, reactions within our body. Well, guess what? The same thing happens to animals. And what we think might stress out the animal is not necessarily what stresses out the animal. Um, we're all mammals, so our bodies react to the same stimuluses in very similar ways. 
So the first, I have a, a, a couple things that I wanted to discuss. The first thing is environmental stuff, okay? And that could be if you have rescue babies, um, there, um, where they came from, if they were in abuse situations, if they were in neglected situations, if they were outside wild um, as a stray cat, um, there's a lot of environmental stresses that come into it. Um, let's say, let's say you have a stray cat or a stray dog. You have um, noise pollution. You have automobile pollution. You have um, environmental pollution like pesticides and fungicides and insecticides. Um, you have um, the stress of just survival in itself. So all of these come and our, just like our bodies collect data throughout our entire lives, so does the data so does the data collect in the animal's body. Yes, back from when I was doing the energy thing, they have an integrated energy field. So they can slough things off a little bit quicker than we can, but they still, their body still remembers things. Okay? So that's the one thing. That's environmental. And, and then of course, if you have an indoor animal, you have chemicals cleaning supplies, um, candles, synthetic fragrances, um, things we bring in from our work. Say if you uh, live with somebody who's in construction or um, auto mechanics or any type of blue collar job like that, they're always around chemicals. So construction workers can bring in the concrete dust, they can bring in asbestos, they can bring in an awful lot of things um, into your home. Um, cleaning supplies full of toxins, absolutely full of toxins, toxins that even our bodies don't know what to do with, so we store them. So our cleaning supplies actually make us in, uh, unhealthy. You can imagine what they do to animals who are close to the floors, all of the floor cleaning solutions, um, any carpet fresh type stuff. Um, all of that stuff gets brought into the animal. And when the animal's body does not function efficiently, it goes into a stress response. So that's for especially indoor cat, indoor animals. Those are big stresses. Now, I want to also talk about some farm animals. Um, farm animals by nature are prey animals. So loud sounds, um, a lot of noise pollution, um, being treated uh, like property, basically, and just kind of cast off as livestock that's actually a stress on the animal. Um, a horse, they're a prey animal. You may have a 1500 pound animal, but they're a prey animal. So they're always on the lookout for um, predators. And those predators can come in many different forms. So those are the environmental stresses. Then we have our stresses. When we are stressed, when I discussed about the energy fields of um, animals, they pick up everything that we put off. So if you are living a stress-filled life, if you are not doing self-care, and if you are in that high stress response state, guess what happens? Your animal becomes the same because especially our indoor animals, actually all animals, um, when they have companionship with a human, they have a re they feel a responsibility to us. And if we are putting off um, high stress energy, they're picking that up. And a lot of times, especially in dogs, because they are like, we are their pack. 
um, we are their family. They literally see us as family. Um, they will take that on in order to, in their animal mind, believe that they're taking it away from you. They're protecting you by absorbing this energy. So we need to be very mindful about the energy that we bring into our households um, and into our barns. If you're an angry person and you have a barn full of animals, guess what? Your animals are going to pick that up. Remember, animals' energy fields are 10 times larger than the size of the animal. So can you imagine going into a, whore, uh, a barn full of 1,500 pound animals? Can you imagine the energy fields off of those? It takes up the entire barn and more. Um, so those are two specific stressors in animals. The third one, and this is the biggest, I think, this is the biggest, nutrition. Nutrition is so incredibly important. We need to feed our animals the way they are meant to be fed. A cat is a primary and obligate carnivore. So if they are eating a lot of foods filled with uh, greens and vegetables and, and seeds and nuts and all the stuff that the pet food companies think are really good for cats because they're good in rat studies, um, your cat is going to have physiological and gastric issues because their body cannot process that stuff. They can't process blueberries. They can't process cranberries. They can't process flax, or, well, flaxseed ground up um, because the omega-3s are really good. Um, if they are on a 100% kibble diet, it is high carbohydrate. It may say grain-free, but it is 50% or more sugar. To get those little kibble nuggets, they have to go through an extruder. And to make it keep that shape, they have to fill it with starches. Starches turn to glucose in the body. And if you feed a cat 100% kibble, you are going to have a cat with extreme internal stress because their body cannot function. Um, I can tell you from um, just an experience I had just last week. My cat, out of nowhere, could be an idiopathic reason. Um, that's what the vet thinks it is. She got pancreatitis. And the problem with pancreatitis in cats is in, well, in humans and in dogs, the pancreas and the liver those two ducks, those two bile ducks, they are separate because we're omnivores. A cat shares one bile duct. So when a cat gets pancreatitis, the liver gets inflamed shortly thereafter. Um, and when they eat a lot of bad food or non-species specific food, their body is over processing things so you are going to end up with more pancreatitis issues um diabetes um is really big in cats because of the high sugar diet it's big in dogs too but at least dogs are omnivores um that causes an immense amount of stress in an animal um feeding horses and cows a protein rich diet um, that's commercial and they throw in actual animal, pro animal protein that's a huge stressor on the animal because horses and cows are 100% vegetarian they eat grasses and um, Yes, they have certain enzymes that they can process these grasses and some of these grains, but too much of it creates stress within the body. It can create gastric issues. 
um, it creates inflammation. Same with cats and dogs. The, the worse the, the diet, the more inflammation the animal is going to have in the body, the more prone to diabetes, the more prone to cancer, the more prone to pancreatitis, the more prone to um, uh, other diseases that would be. So can you imagine the immense amount of internal stress that a poor nutrition or poor diet can create an animal? Um, and then the, the fourth thing I want to talk about is our behavior, not our energy, but our behavior. Um, when you raise your voice too much, that creates a stress response in an animal. They don't understand why they're shouting. They don't understand why they're yelling. It could be you just having a grand old time watching a football game. Um, those loud sounds are very stressful. Um, if you speak to other people in anger, say there's a lot of turmoil in your house or a big, huge fight, the animals feel that both energetically and of course the noise and the, the tones in our voice create stress in the body, um, in an animal, um, just like they would with a child. How many times have mommy and daddy been fighting and the kids get so scared they start crying and they go into the room and they, they hide in a corner or something like that or they go underneath their covers because they're scared. Well, think about an animal who can't process that information as well as a human can. They don't know what to do, so it creates the stress response. Um, treating, uh, yelling at them in, in particular, yelling at a dog because you think they should know what they're supposed to be doing, um, is highly stressful. Number one, the dog feels like you have completely, they've completely disappointed you and that you are shoving them out of the family. Um, and that's an in intense emotion, but that's what they feel like. That causes stress. Imagine how you would feel if you were to um, all of a sudden be shunned by your spouse, by your mother, by your father, by your siblings. Now times that by 10. That's how the animal feels like when you shout at them and shun them. Animals do not think the way we do. What we think they should know they don't necessarily know unless they've been heavily, heavily, heavily trained. Um, they just don't think the way we do and expecting them to act the way a human would act is also create stress in them. We have to really pay attention to how we relate to them. You hit him with a newspaper because they did, they peed on the floor. Well, you're creating stress in that dog. You're creating fear in that dog. What does fear do in us? Fear creates stress. When you create fear in an animal because they didn't listen to you or they did something you know, if they went to the bathroom in the house, most of the time they can't help it. Animals are not spiteful and thinking that they are spiteful creates stress in them and it keeps you in your head. We need to remove ourselves from the voices in our head, from our own agenda, from all of that to understand an animal. So those are four things that cause stress in an animal. And yes, you noticed it. Those are four things that causes stress in us too. Um, here's the, the, the issue. Animals can't sit there and say, Oh, I need a spa day. Oh, I need to, I need a self care day or I have to go meditate for a little bit. They don't do that. They don't have that ability that we have. So a lot 
of the time. They're in that heightened stress state continually. They don't have ups and downs like we do. It may look like they do if they're falling asleep or whatever, but they don't. Um, and of course, that's where my work comes in because my work with the animals helps create a relaxation response within the animal. And the animal gets a little bit of a spa, spa day when they work with me. Um, but this nipping this in the bud and taking care of the stress levels in your home and within the cat or the dog or the horse or the cow or whatever animal you have can significantly less lessen your veterinary bills. It will um, provide a, a higher quality of life for your animal. And it basically costs you less money. <laughs> less money <laughs> um, oh and the one thing also um we all know that stress and animals and vets you know that they kind of go hand in hand but the other thing is over vaccinations is highly stressful vaccines number one i'm not anti-vaccine but i'm anti-over vaccine vaccination Vaccines today are so full of crap, for lack of a better word, and rabies in general, or in, in particular, even though in a lot of places, even in my country, and I don't, I'm sure, I'm sure in your country and, and in other countries around the world, rabies is like a law. But here's the problem with the rabies shot. You have a two pound chihuahua, you have a 150 pound Rottweiler. They get the same exact dose. Because the powers that be tell you that they have to have this particular shot. And a two pound chihuahua getting the same dose as a 150 pound Rottweiler, the Chihuahua is going to be heavily stressed with all the, the mercury and, and the, the additives and preservatives that are in these, um, these shots. Um, so be mindful when you take your animals to the vet. Um, I know when it comes to rabies, we are a little bit in a tug of war with the government and, um, you know, common sense, but just be mindful, just be mindful. Um, and just a little bit of information about how, um, stress affects our body. Let's just say we're in homeostasis. We are not stressed. We are chill. There is peace in the air. Everything is calm. Okay. We have a parasympathetic nervous system and we have a sympathetic nervous system. Okay. In a homeostasis setting, those two are very balanced. Okay. When, when you are really chill and you have no stress, your parasympathetic side is heightened, which is a good thing. When you are in a high stress level, your sympathetic nervous system comes up. And this is where the problem is because this is where the cortisol is re released in the body. Cortisol is a stress hormone. Cortisol causes obesity. Cortisol causes um, diabetes. It causes a lot of issues. So when you are living in a very high stressed world, your sympathetic nervous system is on high alert. You are always in fight or flight mode. Always. That's when adults or humans get adrenal fatigue. Awesome. Well, guess what? Animals get that too. And it can be extremely detrimental to their health. Actually, one of the biggest problems happening in the whole 
veterinary world and the whole animal industry is the amount of cancer cases that are um, prevalent in today's animals. It used to be, say, even 30 years ago, like one in a hundred animals would get cancer. Now it seems like every single animal is going to get cancer. And it's because of the stresses that our environment, um, our lives, our food, and all of that stuff is doing to us and the animals. Um, so I'm really big on this whole stress thing. This is really important and we're at 35 minutes. So I'm going to try to finish this up now. Um, we don't have any live viewers. I was going to ask for questions, but please, 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 please leave a comment, ask a question. I really, one of my missions on this planet is to help animals live healthier, higher quality lives. And that includes the relationship with their guardians, you. So please ask questions and let me know also some of the things that you would like to hear about in this realm. Um, I can go on and on and just keep pulling topics out, but I want to make sure that what I bring to you are things that you want to hear. Um, I, I, it's important that I actually serve you because these classes, they don't, they're not serving me per se. Yeah, they're helping me with my language and my message and they're helping me get my curriculum together, but I am on this planet to serve. I am on this planet to serve our animals. I am on this planet to serve all anybody who would like um, help to find peace. And that includes the relationship between our animals. It's so important. We as human beings love the companionship of animals and we need to create the soft place to fall for these animals. And I would like to help you do that. So please leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your questions. Um, my kitty's walking around the room. I think she wants to go out, um, but I'm almost done. I'm almost done, kitty. Um, but you know, this is just really important to me. So I hope all of this stuff made sense. I hope I wasn't all over the place. Um, like I said, I didn't have notes. This is all coming from my head. Um, any clarification you need, please let me know. Um, and uh, I will definitely, definitely keep you posted. So, um, so I guess that's my time today. I think that's really all I needed to say. Um, pay attention to your environment. Pay attention to your behavior. Be mindful about what you feed your animals. Be mindful of the energy you bring when you approach them. And be mindful that these are separate soul beings with their own emotions, with their own feelings. They feel fear and love just like we do. And we need to kind of move them out of a fear state into that love state so they can be healthier, more productive beings. They need to be productive too. They got jobs, they got missions. Um, and uh, yeah, so that is that. Um, yeah, I think my guide stopped talking, so now I don't know what to say. <laughs> um, anyway, so just um, let me know your thoughts and much love to you and your animals. And if you need anything, if you would need um, readings, I do animal readings, uh, $55.
I will give you a basic reading and I can do the um, uh, a treat energy treatment and if you have a reading and you want a treatment then the reading drops the $22 and then there's the $55 for the treatment so um, you're either paying $55 or you're paying $77 and that's it for one treatment um, and reading so um, please let me know let me know if I can help you have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you on Tuesday for the next installment of Everyday Enlightenment, where we talk about the secrets of motivation. And I'm going to put also on the description, I'm going to put um, my group, which is for uh, specifically for animal guardians. So if you share your life with animals, I'd love to have you in my group. Um, it's a... Uh, it's, it's great. I mean, it's just kind of started and I'm still trying to figure out my footing in there, but it's going to be a great place to be. And if you want to follow me, um, just on Facebook, I do have a, a daily show called Midnight Musings that I do on my profile. So just click my, my name. Um, um, actually, no, I, my name may not be on there. I'll, I'll put that on the description too. So I will see you guys on Tuesday. Bye-bye.